Welcome and uh, thank you for learning with us. We are continuing with uh, fractions and uh, mixed numbers. And uh, for this section, we are going to talk about uh, proper and improper fractions. Also, we are going to talk about uh, the zero as a numerator and a denominator. So let's start. So a proper fraction is a fraction where the numerator has a smaller absolute value than its denominator. So this means if we take a random fraction a over b, the absolute value of the numerator who is a, the absolute value, has to be smaller than the absolute value of b, which is the denominator, in order to qualify this fraction as proper fraction. So let's look at uh, some real cases. If we have uh, a fraction 2 over 7, we look first at the numerator, which is 2, and the absolute value of 2 is 2. The absolute value of uh, the denominator is 7. And here we see that the numerator, which is 2, is less than the denominator, which is 7. So we can say that the fraction 2 over 7 is a uh, a proper fraction. We can also take another example, 5 over 7. Here 5 is less than 7, so we have a proper fraction. If we take another fraction, let's say 8 over 8, in this case, the numerator which is s and the denominator also is 8. And we see that 8 here is not less than 8, they are same, so 8 is equal to 8. So in this case, our fraction 8 over 8 is not a proper fraction. Because in order to have a proper fraction, the absolute value of the top has to be less than the absolute value of the bottom. 8 is equal to 8, so we don't have a proper fraction. If we take another example, which is 11 over 10. In this case, we see that the top, which is 11, is not less, is greater than the bottom, which is 10, right? It doesn't respect our criteria who asks us to have the top less than the bottom. So here we have the bottom, which is greater than the top. So in this case, though, we don't have any proper fraction. So more example of proper fraction, we have uh, 3 over 5. 100 over 213, whatever number it is, but the absolute value of the top has to be less than the absolute value of it in the bottom. So now that we know what are proper fractions, it is also time to know what are improper fractions. So an improper fraction has a numerator that has absolute value greater than or equal its denominator. So uh, in this case now, the absolute value of the numerator, which is the top, has to be greater or equal to the absolute value of the denominator. So if uh, I take some example, 3 over 3, 3 equal 3, so we have improper fraction. When I say 11 over 2, 11 over 2, 11 is greater than 2. So I have an improper fraction. When I take um, 5 over 3, I have improper fraction because the top, which is 5, is greater than the bottom. When I have a 9 over 7, same thing, 9 is greater than 7. And uh, when I have like um, 6 over 6, we have 6 which is equal to 6, so we still have improper fraction. So for improper fractions, the absolute value of the top has to be equal or greater than the absolute value of the bottom. So all these examples are improper fractions. Before we continue, try to group the following fraction based on the fact that they are proper or improper fractions. 4 over 3, 21 over 2, 11 over 14, 
8 over 9, 1 over 1, 13 over 13, 14 over 11. For this, try to put your answer in the comment section below. And if you have a question, feel free to leave your comment over there too. So let's move to the second point. And our second point here is zero as numerator or zero as denominator. So let's take the first point, zero as numerator. This means we write zero on top and at the bottom it can be any number, any whole number that we want except zero because we are talking about zero at the top. So for now we keep zero out of the bottom. So a if I put here y with y being any whole number except zero. It can be negative number, it can be positive number. But in our case right here, we are only dealing with positive numbers. So it can be any whole positive number from one to infinite number whole number so zero at the bottom we are not talking about that yet but we are talking about zero at the top and zero at the top of any fraction is equal to zero or more precision if i say zero over one is equal to zero zero over twenty is equal to zero zero over one million still equal to zero. So zero over any whole number different from zero is equal to zero. Right? Now, what about the denominator, which is the bottom? If I put my fraction bar and I put zero here, and I put like x here, x that represents any whole number, negative or positive, even include zero at the top, because we saw that zero can be at the top, so x can be any whole number. This fraction here, we say that it is undefined. Why? Because we try to put zero at the bottom. And for fractions, the bottom has to always be different from zero. We can never have the bottom equal to zero for fractions. Imagine, can you divide a number into zero parts? I don't think it's possible. For any number divided by zero is undefined. We cannot divide any number into zero pieces, right? So let's just keep it like that. Whenever you find a number 14 over 0, this is undefined. Uh, 100 over 0, 0 over 0. All these fractions are undefined. Correct. So now let's finish with these two points. Just a recall. A fraction that has numerator equal to denominator is equal to 1. So if I write, uh, if I take 3 over 3, this is equal to 1. If I take uh, 100 over 100, this is still equal to 1. If I take A over A, equal to 1 any number y over y equal to 1. So any number over itself is equal to 1. And finally, any number x over 1 equal to the same number. So x represents any whole number, right? So that means if I replace x by any number 1 over 1, I have 1, 3 over 1 is equal to 3, 7 over 1 equal to 7. Okay, so I think this is a good point to stop. And if you have uh, any question, as I said before, 
feel free to leave your comment, your question as a comment, or if uh, you want to clarify something that we missed, feel free to leave it uh, at the comment section too. And uh, do not forget to, to like, to promote, to share this uh, video. So people that are looking for help, like you, or if you are helping us help other people, just share the information so they can find this video and learn from it. So for now, thank you and see you for the next topic. Bye-bye.